Welcome back to Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. In this lesson, we're going to add some more methods to our My Library class, again using the test first approach. First, let's consider what methods we need in our class. We'll want get methods for the three fields in the class. We really don't need set methods since the name will be set when we create the object and the lists will be a lot easier to manage one item at a time and you'll see more as we go along. Now to manage the lists we'll need to be able to add and remove items. So we'll need add book, add person, remove book, and remove person methods. So those are the ones we're going to work on in this lesson. Now in addition we're going to need methods to check out books, check in books, and then it'll be nice to be able to get a list of all the books that are available, that is books that aren't checked out, and it'd be nice to get a list of all the books that are checked out. Finally, if we have a person, it would be nice to get a list of all the books that a particular person has. So let's get started. Let's open up the My Library class in the Package Explorer. We'll select My Library, and we're going to let Eclipse create the get methods for us as we did before. So we'll go source, generate getters and setters. We'll move this down so you can see. Then as we mentioned we don't want set methods but we do want the get methods. So we'll check get books, get name, get people, and then we'll press OK. And we can see that we've got get books get people and get name. Now just to be safe, let's go ahead and open up our test class and just run it just to make sure we didn't hurt anything. It's running and we get success. The next thing we want to do is write a method to test the add and remove books methods. We'll test both of these in one test method. Now as we think about these tests, we're going to need some book and person objects and we're going to need a My Library object to work with. Now we could create these in each of the separate test methods, but that might require some duplicate code. Instead, let's write a simple setup method that will just create some book and person objects and a My Library object. And that way we can just run setup at the start of each test and we'll have some objects to work with. Double click here to give us some space. So we'll use code assist. The method returns void. It's called setup. And it's just going to create some objects for us. First we'll create some uh, two books. Call them B1 and just call it book one as the title. Then we'll just copy and paste this line and change B1 to B2 and book one to book two. So now we have two book objects. Now we'll create two new person objects the same way. P1 and then we'll copy P1 paste and call it P2. Next we need to set the names of the two person objects, so we'll call the first one Fred and we'll call the second person P2, we'll call her Sue. Now finally, let's create the My Library object. So we'll go My Library ML equals new My Library and we'll give it a name Test. Now as we look at this, we've got a problem. The variables b1, b2, p1, p2, and ml are all local variables. That is, they're declared inside the setup method. So these variables are not going to be visible inside other methods of our test class. And of course, the whole reason for creating this setup method is to have these variables available in the other methods. To fix this, we need to make these variables fields of our test class 
and then that way any method inside the class can have access to the fields. Now this is an issue that other Java programmers before us have faced and Eclipse has an automatic way of turning a local variable into a field. To do it, we'll highlight the first declaration, go up to refactor, and one of the items here is convert local variable to field. So if we click that, it gives us some options. We'll just take the defaults, press OK, and now we've got B1 as a private field and it's not declared down in the method. So if we just do that same thing a couple more times. Now we could of course make these same changes by hand, but not only is using the wizard a lot faster, it's also less prone to error. And we'll do it one last time here for the My Library. Now we've got these available as fields, and the setup is just initializing these, which is what we want. So now these variables will be available to us in our test methods. Now let's start the test method. So we'll create the method. It's public, it's void, and it's called test add book. The first thing we're going to do is use our setup method to create our setup our test objects. So we'll create the test objects by running the method setup. So now we're going to test that the initial size of books is zero. So we're going to do an assert equals. We're going to say we expect zero, and the actual is the ML get books size method. The size method returns the total number of items in the list. Next, let's add our books to the list using the yet to be created add book method. We'll use quick fix to add the empty method to the my library class. So we'll type ml add book book b1 ml dot add book book b2. Now we'll use quick fix to create the empty method. Next, we'll go back to our test class and add in three assert statements. First, we're going to check that 2 is the size of the get books now. Since we've added two objects, 2 should be the same as get book size. Next, we're going to do an assert equals, and we're going to make sure that 0 is the index of objects of object B1. So it's index of object B1. Remember, we start counting at 0. Then we're going to copy and paste this line, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say that 1 is the index of object B2. So now we've tested our add book method. Let's test our remove book method. So we'll type ml remove book, we'll remove book b1, and then we're going to assert, we're going to copy the assert equals, and we're going to now say that the size should be 1, because we've removed one of the books. And then we're going to say, that, again, we're going to copy and paste and say that the index of item B2 should now be 0. So we removed book 1, the size should now be 1, and book 2 should now, B2 should now be moved down to index 0. Now we'll use quick fix to add the remove book method to our My Library class. And there it is. Now we'll save and go back to the test class. Okay, now we're going to do something very similar. We're going to copy these two lines, 
paste them down below. And we're going to remove book B2 now, because that's the one left. And we're going to check that the size now is 0. And we'll save our file. Now, let's go back to the My Library class and actually write the two methods. Both methods are very simple, since they just use built-in methods that we get from the ArrayList class. So the first one is just this books add b1. So we're just using the add method of the ArrayList books to add the b1 parameter. The remove is very similar. It's this books remove. And there we want to remove an object. And again, the object is b1. So we'll save. And we'll go back over to the test, double click, rerun our test, and it works. Now we'll write the add and remove person methods. To save time, we'll just code the methods in the My Library class. If you like, create your own test method to test these methods. So the add method is public void add person, person p1, and it's this people dot add p1. That's all there is to it. And the other method is very similar, void remove person person p1, this people remove object p1. We'll save. Now at this point, we have some of our methods done. We go into the pack package explorer. We can see we have a number of our methods written for the My Library class. We have some more methods to go. And that's what we'll work on in the next lesson. So this is the end of Lesson 11. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.